Hello Internet. I built this table about five years ago and I've already got to take it apart. Because five years ago when I made this table I thought I would try wiping varnish which is something I've never done and that has not worked well for this tabletop. There are places here where it's basically gone through to bare wood and it was already doing that back in the spring so yeah it didn't even last four years. Take it apart and bring it down to the shop. So refinishing is going to take a few days, so uh, maybe more than a few days. But you can't eat at a table without a top. Fortunately, I have another top. Bet you weren't expecting that. So a number of months ago, we're driving down the road in our neighborhood and I saw this seven foot long solid wood tabletop on the side of the road. So I stopped the car and I, the guy happened to be outside and I'm like, do you want this gone? And he's like, yeah, I want it gone. And uh, it is solid wood. It might either ash or oak, can't really tell from the green, but weighed a ton. And I just had it sitting in my garage waiting to do something with it. and. Uh, so it's going to serve as a temporary table while I get the other top refinished. It's a bit too big, but I'm not going to cut it down just for, uh, for this. Maybe I should just keep it like this. It looks kind of nice. So the other day I posted a picture of my tabletop to Instagram showing the worn spot and talking about my plans to refinish it. And I got, of course, a few comments. Um, uh, one was really encouraging me to use an oil-based uh, polyurethane instead of a water-based because he says it's going to uh, work, be a little bit more flexible, will work better on a table. Uh, and a couple of other people who are like, Armor Seal, Armor Seal. Talk to Macromona if you don't know what I'm talking about. Armor Seal. <laughs> uh, Armor Seal is not in the big box store around here in Canada. I can get it. It's at Lee Valley, I discovered. Um, I find it a little on the expensive side. But anyways, uh, I'm in a basement shop. And um, so uh, ventilation is an issue. I have one small little window here that I could put a fan in, but everything I do here, you're gonna smell upstairs. And, uh, and, and this guy, he's like, oh, Armor Seal, it's not so bad. It's not so bad compared to other oil-based. And I'm like, this is my house. Um, not so bad isn't gonna cut it. So I, you know, I did some Googling and I found a few people, again, just, couple of people who are like oh you know it was days before the smell got out of the piece you know and uh, anyways it is November when I'm doing this November in southern Ontario you know it is you know like five degrees Celsius outside today um, I can't really have the house open um, and I really I just really prefer using water-based stuff if I can um, it's better for the environment and blah 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 uh, and also, you know, I've been using water-based polyurethane for like 20 years, so I'm really fairly comfortable with it. But anyways, I'm still prepared to learn. So I did some test pieces. So this tabletop is ash. So I found a piece of ash on the shelf and I ran it through the joiner and I quickly sanded it to 150 grit. And then I just went into my cabinet and I'm like, what do I got? And I have some Helmsman. Spar urethane, I use this uh, when I make canoe paddles. That's why I have such a small can, because I hardly need it. This is an oil-based polyurethane. Um, I really like this, Minwax Oil Modified Polyurethane. It says oil modified, but it is still a water-based polyurethane. I use this quite a bit. I really like it because it is water-based, a uh, very low odor, nice cleanup, but it still gives a bit of the ambering look that you like in an oil finish. Um, uh, this this is just in the big box store here. It's Minwax. It's a big company, um, but it, I, I've never seen anybody else on YouTube using this. Uh, not sponsored. Minwax, give me a call. <laughs> uh, this is some uh, shellac. 
uh, which so anyway so on this first section I used the helmsman on this section I used the minwax oil modified on this section I put down a coat of uh, sanding sealer uh, shellac and then over top of that I went with polyurethane and here I did polyurethane this is verithane this is actually a uh, this is actually meant for floors, really hard. Um, I used this on my floor project recently, water-based, very clear, and I put that on these two sections. So this is plain polyurethane, this is polyurethane over shellac. And I looked at all of these, and I'm like, I can hardly tell. The helmsman has a little bit of color to it. Um, the one on the end is maybe a little bit paler, but I was surprised at, at how similar they are. And then my wife is like, well, can you put more shellac? Will that help with the color? So I went and I found another piece of scrap ash in the corner and I sanded this one and look how, look how, look at the color difference. So on this side of the board, I did one coat of shellac followed by polyurethane. On this side of the board, I did two coats of shellac followed by polyurethane. Again, I can't tell a difference, but this wood, these are both ash. Just shows you the variation that you can get within a species. This is ash, this is ash. This is painfully pale white. This has actually got quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of brownish tone to it. So what am I going to do? I haven't decided yet. Uh, by the end of the video you'll know. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards the shellac followed by poly simply because I've got a huge can of poly here that I can use. Um, or I might go with the oil modified polyurethane on its own for even simpler because it's just one application. Except, yeah, I'd have to buy some. Almost out. So now we come to the boring part of the video where it's going to be sanding and sanding and sanding because I'm planning to just sand this down. Um, I have no experience with chemical strippers and again, basement shop I really don't want to get messing around with them and uh, from a quick bit of googling around it, it seems like it's sort of like whether sanding or chemical stripper is faster I think sanding could be faster because for one thing this is just a big flat surface but This is um, a little over 30 minutes of sanding. This is almost all from the random random orbit sander with 80 grit paper. I tried my dad's old uh, belt sander because I've heard belt sanders are more aggressive, but that also only had an 80 grit belt on it. It was doing a terrible job, and I went back to the random orbit. But even this is not cutting it. This would be great if I had a you know one of those wide belt sanders, but don't got one of those. So, anyways, just thought I'd give you an update on how things are going. So here we are considerably later, <clears throat> many hours later. I started with 80 grit because that's what I had and I very quickly learned that that wasn't going to cut it. It was just clogging and it was just not cutting through the finish on there. So I had to make a quick shopping trip and uh, I picked up another assortment and what I ended up doing is I went right back to 40 grit in my random orbit sander and ground it down 40 grit followed by 60 grit and then 80 grit 120 150 and now I'm ready to do shellac when it comes to finishing another good reason for doing shellac is it's sort of the universal barrier shellac can go over anything and under anything is what they say and yeah I've stripped this back to bare wood but I mean am I 100% certain there's not any lacquer anywhere left not really so then it's a good idea to uh, for me I feel better putting the shellac down first before I put the poly over top of it so I uh, still need to vacuum it again and then we can get going the nice thing about shellac is that it dries really quickly one of the negative things about shellac is that it dries really quickly which means I tend to work really quickly because uh, it's really hard to maintain a wet edge, I find. Anybody out there who's new to shellac, 
you need to make sure you get de-waxed shellac if you're going to put polyurethane on top of it. So I did two coats of shellac and after that I sanded it lightly with 220, wiped off the dust. And now it's on with the poly. I've got three coats now and I'm getting ready for the fourth. Still sanding in between but now I'm using 240 grit. Okay, it's been five coats. That should be good enough. You could call it quits now. The finish feels really good. If you really want that little bit of extra polish, you just get a little bit of water and I would dribble it on and then I take a synthetic pad and buff it out. The water just lubricates it and you get a nice polish on. Don't use steel wool on a water-based finish because little bits of the metal can embed in the uh, in the finish and they will uh, they'll you'll get little rust spots so you always have to use a synthetic on a water-based finish and with that I'm going to call this little refinishing project done well done except for the curing the instructions say that this will reach full hardness in three days and since we've got the spare table on the go upstairs I'm gonna let this cure for the full three days I want a good solid uh, finish before I put it into use. So I'm, I'm going to cut the video here. If you want to see how I built the table, you know, I'll put a link up there or down in the video description. And as always, I'd like to thank you for stopping by and spending some time in my shop. Hope you found something interesting or enjoyable, and we'll see you on the next one.